This is a differentiation modeling question. We have two identical rectangles of width x are taken out from a bigger rectangle of width 25 centimeters and length 40 centimeters. And what's left behind is the net of a cuboid, where this is the base of the shape. Imagine if we were to raise these three sides so that they're vertical. They will then form three of the sides of our shape. This will form the fourth. The height of our cuboid is told to be x centimeters, so this is the length x. If you imagine folding this side up so it's vertical, as we know that this length is x, that will then be the height of our cuboid. That would also mean that this length here is x, because when you fold up those two sides, this one and this one, these two corners will have to meet, so this side must be x. And as this is the fourth side of our shape, this would also have to be x. And our goal for part A is to find in terms of x expressions for the length and width of the base. Okay, so, so again, this is our base over here. Let's call our length z, and let's call our width y. So for part A, we're trying to work out what z is equal to and what y is equal to. We're trying to get those two things in terms of x. Let's start with this side here. So we know that this length here is x, so that means that these two will have to be x as well. And so we can form an equation from that side, this side here. We can say that 25 is equal to z plus 2x. And then we can rearrange for z, and we end up with 25 minus 2x. So that would be the length of the base of the cuboid in terms of x. And now for y, we can consider this length here. So if this is the base of our shape, the base of our cuboid, this will have to be the top. And that would mean that this side is also y. We can say that these four lengths here will add up to make 40. So that will end up being 2y plus 2x is 40. Divide everything by 2 and then rearrange for y. We get y is equal to 20 minus x. So then these are our two answers for part A. And now for part B, we want to show that the volume of the cube is equal to this. Okay, so we have the two dimensions of our base. We know what z is, we know what x is, and we know what the height of our shape is as well, x. So our volume would then equal to, so z, y, x, which would be, so z is 25 minus 2x, y was 20 minus x, and then we have the x at the end. Expand out the two brackets, and we end up with 2x squared minus 25x minus 40x, which is minus 65x, plus 500, all times x, and then when we expand this out, we end up with our answer. For part c, we are trying to find out the value of x for which the volume of the cuboid is a maximum. So to maximize, we have to differentiate. Differentiate the volume with respect to x, and we end up with 6x squared minus 130x plus 500. Set this equal to 0 to find the stationary points, to find the maximum point. And we end up with two solutions for x. x is equal to 50 over 3 and 5. Okay, so we need to figure out which of these two things is going to correspond to our volume being a maximum. In the second part, in part D, we're going to be verifying that it is a maximum. So we could do part D now, and that will tell us which value of x will give us a maximum. But another way is to think about the lengths that we have in our shape, and the two lengths for x that we have here, and then think about whether either of these lengths wouldn't be possible. So all of our lengths have to be positive x, y, and z. Well, both of our values of x are positive. What about for z and y? So if we look at our two values for z and y, so z must be bigger than 0, and then y must also be bigger than 0. 50 over 3 is 16.6 recurring. If we were to put 16.6 recurring into this value for z here, we'd get a negative value. We can make inequalities for x and y from 
these two, we can put in 25 minus 2x, replace that with z, and for y, replace that with 20 minus x. And then we know that x has to be less than 20. We can get that from the inequality for y. And from the inequality for z, we end up with x has to be less than 12.5. So this is not less than 12.5, and therefore that cannot be one of our values of x. So x is 5. And then for part d, we're trying to find the maximum value of the cuboid and show that it is a maximum. So then we have to differentiate one more time to prove that this is a maximum. So differentiate this again, and we end up with 12x minus 130. We put in x is equal to 5 into this, and we end up with minus 70. Minus 70 is less than 0, which means the gradient is decreasing, and therefore this must be a local maximum. And then we work out the corresponding volume. So we put in x is equal to 5 into our volume equation. So our volume then becomes 2 5 cubed minus 65 5 squared plus 500 times 5, which gives us 1, 1, 2, 5. And the units would be centimeters cubed.